Hi, I'm Ellen Gormley and welcome to my channel. Today we're crocheting with a double-ended crochet hook. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are crocheting with a double-ended crochet hook. This is a J hook and I'm using a hook that's slightly bigger than what I normally would use for this worsted weight yarn. So I would probably usually use an I hook for this yarn. It is a little bit thicker than um, typical worsted weight, but it's just the way this particular yarn is and that's fine. Um, crocheting with a double-ended hook is very, very, very similar to Tunisian. So check out my Tunisian tutorials as well for a variety of stitches. So I've chained a bunch, I didn't even count, and I'm pulling up a loop in the back ridge of each chain across. Now Tunisian crochet and crochet with a double-ended hook are very similar but they are different. Crocheting with a double-ended hook, you turn, you generally use two colors, it reduces the amount of curl and um, it's reversible. It's not exactly reversible, it will look different on each side, but it looks presentable on each side. So here we go. So once you've loaded up loops, that for the rule of thumb is that's when you turn. So it's all loaded up with loops. This is when you turn. So I'm going to turn my hook and then slide, turn and slide, turn and slide. Okay, so we'll put that down. We'll grab our second color, place a slip knot on the other end of the hook, just like this. And now we will work off the loops or bind off or return pass uh, a little bit differently than Tunisian for this first row with adding the color. And I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook instead of just one. So yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook all the way across. Now it's kind of a dense fabric to um, use a double-ended crochet hook. This is also called crow hook, crochet, and crochet on the double. Those are brand names from different companies, but it's all um, crocheting with a double-ended hook. So we do not turn yet because we do not have the hook loaded up with loops. Today I'm just doing a uh, Tunisian knit stitch with it, so I'm pulling up a loop in each bar across. You need to follow your pattern for your crochet with a double-ended hook pattern and see how they want you to do it. But for today, we are stitching as if to Tunisian knit. Tunisian, of course, also called Afghan crochet. So I've got all my loops on the hook, and so it's time to turn. So when all the loops are there, that's your cue to turn. So I'm turning my hook to the other side and slide, turn and slide, turn and slide. Okay, so the other color is here waiting and so that's my cue to pick it up. And this time, since I'm not adding a new color, I'm gonna go ahead and yarn over and pull through just one the first time and yarn over and pull through two every time after that. You'll see that this um, fabric, this two color, it's gonna be a dominant color on one side and then the other side is gonna be the other color. Oops, I dropped it. It's okay, I'm gonna tighten up that blue loop. Tighten that up there, there we go. Okay, I do not turn because I don't have a bunch of loops on yet. So let's go ahead and pick up stitches. So as if to Tunisian knit all the way across. Of course, there's a variety of stitches. And you a variety of stitches that can be made with this technique. And once the loop, the hook is loaded up, what do we do? We turn and slide. Okay. And then the next color is waiting. Now I am getting this tangled a little bit, so I will just rotate the skeins of yarn so that that doesn't happen. Pull the little tail there. And yarn over and pull through one. So let's make a few rows. I'm gonna pause the video and then um, I'll show you what it looks like after a few more rows are done. But in general, we're gonna keep on going with this technique until you get the hang of it. If you're also already familiar with Tunisian crochet, this is gonna be you know, a snap for you. It gets a little bit more complicated when it's time to interpret a specific pattern um, and on with a double-ended crochet hook. Remember, it's loaded up, so we turn and slide. But there aren't that many patterns out there for this technique. So um, you're not, I don't know that you're gonna run across these patterns unless you go deliberately looking for them. 
This is making a very stretchy fabric. And I'm going to finish this little row here, tighten up, and you can see it's kind of stretchy. And on this side, it's predominantly blue. This side, it's predominantly the multicolor, and it's a very thick fabric. Okay, so let's see. Finishing that row, but we're not turning yet because we don't have our hook loaded up. But I'm going to pause and show you a few more rows in just a moment. Okay, it's loaded up. So remember, what do we do? Turn and slide. Okay, I'm gonna pause here and be right back. Well, you can't really tell, but I actually switched stitches about here. So it's a little bit uh, more space between this row and this row. And what I did is, remember I was um, Tunisian stitching as if to Tunisian knit. Um, but then I, st I changed my mind and started working in the gap under the horizontal bar, just like we would um, for the Tunisian full stitch. And this way is a little bit tricky because you just have to remember to keep the stitch count accurate because it gets confusing whether or not to go under that last um, vertical bar or not. I know I have 10 stitches, so I can count loops, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So 10 is where I stop for this stitch. And then when it's loaded up, we slide and turn, or turn and slide rather. Also, another way to make sure that your yarn doesn't get tangled is to alternate which way you turn. Turn one way the, fir one, the first time and then turn the opposite direction the other time. I generally forget to do that, so I end up just rotating my skeins of yarn. So, but that is one way to do it, is to uh, turn one way for one row and then turn the opposite direction for the next row to keep the balls of yarn from tangling. But it's okay, whatever works, right? So this way, see there's like no curl at all. It's very common for this last loop to get uh, loosened and you just tug on it a little bit. It is no big deal. Another advantage to crocheting with a double-ended hook is you can really um, vary the yarns that you use. So imagine for a moment if I had used a worsted weight yarn for one of the yarns, but I used a uh, mohair yarn for the other one. Like you would really see a big difference in um, texture and it would really create some cool effects. So counting two, four, six, eight, ten. I know I'm on the right track because I had ten stitches. When it's full, look how blue this side is. You're going to turn and slide and look how white this side is. So it looks very much the same but it's reversible. Like it would be blue on one side and the variegated on the other. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial on beginner crocheting with a double-ended hook. And uh, keep track, please like and subscribe. And uh, check out the Tunisian videos for the variety of stitches that can be made. Because these, this hook is small, you can make it in panels if you like, or you can get one of those really cool hooks that have um, the cables and put a hook on the other end and make really big projects. But generally, you're going to use a smaller hook because that's what's available. I'd like to give out a shout out to DJM, Karen S, Lisa G, and Patricia S. Thank you so much for being loyal subscribers. I appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with somebody who you think might enjoy crocheting with a double-ended hook. Bye.